I feel a coincidence and ended up wearing my Slytherin t-shirt today, which, you know what, is appropriate for this particular review. Now, The Arrowverse, as I've previously stated before, is my third favourite TV show of all time. I know, I know it's not a show, it's a whole universe, but if I were to judge every single Arrowverse show on its own merits, it'd probably make up almost half my list. So I keep them locked up together, and one of my favourites is, of course, The Flash. And while I am aware that The Flash recently finished a seventh season run, with him going up against villains such as Mirror Monarch, dealing with the forces, and with Godspeed, I, I felt it's been a little while since I've rewatched one of the seasons, and the next one up on my list was season three from uh, 2016 to 2017. And this one, hev season three relied heavily on the famous Flash storyline, Flashpoint. Which, anyway, th this season saw most of the Flash of the Flash cast return, including Grant Gustin, Candace Patton, Jesse L. Martin, Keenan Lunsdale, Carlos Valdez, Daniel Panabaker, Tom Cavana, and John Wesley Shipp, along with new additions to the cast, including Cecile Horton, played by Danielle Nicolette, and new ones including Anne Dudek, playing Tracy Brand, and Tom Felton as Julian Albert. I do wish that they could have kept Tom Felton around for another season, but, I mean, come on. He's Tom Felton. Draco Malfoy, one of the star, one of the stars of one of the biggest Hollywood franchises of all time. So yeah, probably not going to get in for a season two, but it was nice to see. Now, as I said, season three heavily relied on the Flashpoint arc. Now, for those who don't know what that is, I'll give you a brief rundown. In the comic of Flashpoint, as I said, as I mentioned here, uh, Barry Allen, through a dark point of his life, ends up running back in time and saving his mother from being killed by his enemy, Reverse Flash. Now, he then ends up living in an entirely alternate reality, and as in the TV, the TV show, like with the comic, goes most the same way. He does still have powers, but he doesn't really feel the need to use them, and hell, there's only a new person doing the job of the Flash. But, eventually, he must return, set things right, and put reality back the way it was in order to save it. Now, season three saw that, and for the first half of the season, saw Barry and Team Flash dealing with a whole load of new enemies, partially created through Flashpoint, including Rival, Magenta, Mirror Master, Top, Shade, Plunder, and Killer Frost. But then, season two, but then the second half of season three also brought about a new problem. As they have to, the big villain of this one, while they started off with a villain named Dr. Alchemy, which is eventually revealed to be Barry's uh, new lab mate, uh, Julian Albert, played by Felton, he also discovers that a new speedster villain is in town called Savitar. And he ends up seeing that a few months down the line, Savitar is going to kill Iris, who Barry has, of course, just started a, a proper relationship with. And they have, throughout the rest of the season, they have to do anything possible in order to stop it. To find a way to prevent Savitar from killing Iris, and probably find a way in order to set things right. Which, now, season th season three, while the first two season villains with Reverse Flash and Zoom were definitely great villains, Savitar is probably the most complex villain the show ever did, because, spoiler alert, it's ultimately revealed that Savitar is a time remnant variant of Barry Allen himself. Basically, in the future, Barry has to cre use to create time remnants in order to defeat Savitar. Savitar lets one of these remnants live, but the remnant uh, receives no love from Team Flash. Basically, they see him as not the real Barry Allen, just a disposable copy. And this causes the remnant to go mad ends up going back in time, becoming Savitar in order to kill Barry and preserve its own existence. Which is rather complex and rather dark, and definitely one of the most complex villains the show ever did. As I said, they also have to deal with a load of other villains, including Rival, Magenta, Mirror Master, Top Shade, Killer Frost, Plunder, Clive Yorkin, Music Meister, Gorilla Grodd, Doctor Alchemy and Savitar, as well as as well as a big uh, crossover event for the 
for the Arrowverse Invasion. And another smaller crossover with duets between The Flash and Supergirl, which I, it, which I have actually got several three songs from saved into my music library. Those being their cover of Put a Little Love in Your Heart, Super Friend, and Running Home to You. Which, yeah, I definitely like it. I definitely think it's one of the better musical storylines. Probably not as good as Buffy's, but you know what? Still pretty good. Now, as I said, now I'd, I'd say my two favourite episodes, uh, as to which one I like more, I double back and forth. My two personal favourite episodes this time around would be either The Once and Future Flash, where Barry ends up running forward in time in order to try and find out who Savitar is from his future self, and ultimately ends up reuniting the future team Flash, which is nice to see, or Infantino Street. I mean, you gotta love a little Captain Cold. I mean, well... Well, on Legends and in The Flash, uh, Wentworth Miller had stepped down quite a bit. He did come back for this, and I do, I, I do like the chemistry between him and The Flash. It's like, The Flash, Thief, my kind of mission, one condition, my rules, your rules. I, I love the tension the two have. Even the, they even got John Wesley's shit back as Jay Garrick. I mean, once once again, it. Once again, he he feels and if he, oh, God, I'm, he he fits a good role here. I mean, while the Jay Garrick they had the previous season with Teddy Sears, a the Hunter Zolomon type, while he was nice in his own way, Jay Garrick is, uh, John Wesley Shipp is Jay Garrick. Yeah, that just fits. And they did also do some really good character interactions, such as Danielle Panabaker's slow transformation into Killer Frost, and Carlos Valdez's Cisco Ramon trying to find a way to keep him in the light. Yeah, that was nice to see. It was also nice to see Keenan Lonsdale's Wally West finally get superpowers and become Kid Flash. Overall, I personally think that Season 3 is definitely one of the strongest seasons of The Flash, and I, I am glad I finally got back to it. I hope I hope to fill the rest of the year with getting a little more of The Flash, catching up on the other three seasons that we've had so far, and I am aware they recently finished Season 7, and they've got Season 8 lined up. I do hope they go on for a little bit longer. I hope to get to at least season 9 with them. I mean, maybe they will or maybe they won't. I'll have to wait and see. Anyway, that's my quick little re-review, or my re-watch, of The Flash Season 3. You know what? Still love it. Anyway, until next time, see ya.